Now since all the subblocks are designed and verified, it's time for the top risk 5 IP code verification using Verilog test bench. In order to make the top article code ready, we need to instantiate all the subblocks and make the necessary connections using internal wires. Let's see the same. So this is the top module that is the risk 5 IP top core RTL you can see here where I have declared the top module name over here I have declared all the input and output ports okay now below I have declared internal wires which will be used further for connection between the instances okay so what we have done here based on the pipeline stage that is stage one two three the sub-blocks have been instantiated and integrated over here. For example, in stage 1, you can see we have the TC Max and the Reg Block 1 which have instantiated and I have done the necessary connection as per the specification. Similarly, for stage 2, the necessary blocks have been instantiated and I have done the connection. For example, and also similarly for stage 3, below you can see here, the necessary sub-blocks have been instantiated and we have done the connections. Okay. So let me assume that this top is ready now and we will discuss now how to develop the top level Verilog test bench and do the simulation and verify the top using Xilinx environment. Okay. Now this is the Verilog test bench which is developed as a static in TB. Here I have declared multiple tasks to represent different types of RIS-5 instructions. These tasks are then called inside the stimulus block and for each type of the instruction we need to verify the functionality. Let me take you through the TB now. So what we have done in the test bench module, we have declared the vector variables and the wire type as per the necessary requirement. And then we have also declared few parameter constants which we have used further below for representing different types of operations and functionality. Okay. And then we have instantiated the duty over here. I have done a order based port mapping where egg variables are used to drive the input ports of the duty and the wire types are used to sample the output coming from the duty. So those things we have taken care. This is the logic for the clock generation. We have initialized task to initialize all the inputs to a known value. Mostly I have done zero over here. Then we have a reset task. Now you can see here the reset task. Now this task is a step checking task in the sense Within this task, apart from driving the stimulus, I'm also comparing the expected output with the reference value. So that part we have done here, which I'll explain in detail. Similarly, for each type of instruction, you can see for R type instruction, we have a separate task, followed by I type instruction, then load instruction, okay, then stored instructions also have declared. We have jump and link type instruction, then we have jump and link rec type instruction. We also have load upper immediate type instruction followed by B type instruction. You can see here. Okay. And we have created one task for flush, which will be used for flush operation that is mostly doing an NOP. And in the stimulus block, finally, all the tasks have been called in the sequential order one by one and individual test cases have been created. You can see here for our type, I have generated 10 test cases. Similarly, for different types of instruction, multiple test cases have been created and we have to verify how these instructions are actually getting verified, whether they're working properly or not. Okay, all right guys. So let's see the same. Let's check the step checking task block for the reset task. In this task, I have driven the reset signal to 1 and after 2 clock cycles with a T-hole delay, I have sampled different outputs to check if the reset is successfully done or not. This T-hole value is a parameter constant which has been declared in the top and is used here to make sure that the duty outputs are sampled properly after the passage of the clock without any synchronization issues. After successful reset, the expected values for the first signal I'm checking here is IN adder out. So it should be zero. So I'm checking here if it is not equal to zero, then it will display an error message that program counter address is not reset properly and the simulation will be suspended, which I'm doing by calling dollar stop system task. And also I'm displaying the time at the time of error. 
Now, apart from this, let's check what are the other signals that I'm checking during reset. Now, the rest thing, if you look at, I'm also checking if the 32 general purpose registers are initialized to zero or not. Here, I'm using a path hierarchy concept. The reason is the reg underscore file is an array variable, is not an output port. So to access that, I have to use the instance name of the DAT in the test bench dot. This is the instance name of the register module. That is the register file dot the name of the array variable in the square bracket. I'm using the variable i that is the iterator and comparing with zero if it is equal to zero or not. And accordingly, if it is not equal to zero, it will display the message. The processor registers are not reset properly and with an error message with an error time as well. And again, simulation will get suspended. So similarly, for different outputs, if you look at misaligned exception out, MI out, MPI out, MEIE, MPIE, MSIE. Similarly, the rest signals I have checked here. I'm comparing all the signals that are getting reset in the design to zero or not. I'm checking that. So these are mostly the signals coming from the CSR module, then we have signals coming from the register block 2 module, which I'm checking again. And if all the signals are initialized properly during reset, at the end you can see if it doesn't do any suspension or simulation, it will display finally the reset is perfect for the RISC for IP code that I'm doing here. And after that, I'm making the reset signal unknown for some time and I'm giving a delay of cycle minus t whole minus t setup. So cycle is the time period of the clock which I have declared with the help of the parameter constant. I'm subtracting t whole and t setup to make sure that the next time when the input is changed, the input should change before the process during setup time. So in this self-picking test bench, the idea is we will drive the inputs before the process within setup time and we're going to sample the output after the process after whole time. To maintain that, we are giving this extra delay. Okay, so that is how the task has been declared over here. The next task that I'm going to explain is the R type instruction task. Okay, the R type instruction are also called as register instructions. These are used for register based ALU operations. Let's check the task for this thing. In this task, R type underscore inst. You can see I have declared one input argument that is operation which is 4 bit input type. I have declared here multiple task local variables to be used for different purposes. You can see here I have declared op1 which is 32 bit sign type, op2 also 32 bit sign reg. We have opcode 7 bits, function 3 3 bits, function 7 7 bits, rs1 5 bit. R is to 5 bits, RD 5 bit, result is 32 bit. And also I've declared one more variable, string underscore CMD, which is actually, if you look at, 32 down to 0. Okay, so let's see uh, for what purpose these variables have been used below. For OP1, OP2, I have randomized it to generate some random operand values with a constraint 16. So this is going to generate a random integer between 0 to 15. The same applies to op2 as well. Opcode have set to r type. This is the opcode value for r type instruction. Functions we have set to 0, 0, 0. Function 7 also I made 0. The rs1 address I have kept to 2. rs2 address I have kept to 3. The rd address I have kept to 5. Then what I am doing here with the help of the path hierarchy concept, I am trying to access the integer file, register file, that is the basically the array variable. I'm trying to assign op1 to rs1. It's a kind of I'm writing the operand 1 to the particular register at address number 2. Similarly, here I'm writing op2 value at register address at 3. And I have asserted the instruction as to the int. And then I'm using the case construct and I'm checking for the operation expression now the operation expression should match with any of these functions you can see here. Now this add sub exor, if you look at these are the parameter constants which I have declared at the top. Let me show you there.
let me show the same so you can see here i have declared here multiple parameter constants which i have used below so for different kinds of instructions and functions i have declared different parameters for example for r type i have declared this add sub xor etc you can see here for immediate i have used add i xor i these are for the immediate instructions for load instruction we have the load constants like load byte load half word load word for store operation i have store byte store half word store word this is for the branch functions which i have used like branch equal branch not equal etc so i'm going to use further in my text bench below in the relevant task now coming back to the case suppose the operation matches with the add constant then i'm calculating of one plus of two that is the add operation between these two operands i'm storing in the result variable and i'm setting the string underscore cmd to add string okay so depending on the type of operation i have used the relevant operators and also i'm trying to store the string well according to the type of operation you can see here so all the combinations i have kept here let me explain one more suppose operation is sub that is subtract so I'm setting function 7 with the fifth bit as 1 because I have initialized it to 0 first. That shows a subtraction operation. I'm performing op1 minus op2 and I'm displaying the string sub. And with this, I'm going to store the string sub, which I'm going to display further. So similarly, for different types of functions, the relevant operation has been carried out. After that, below, I'm now generating the instruction input by concatenating the relevant variables in the same order of the instruction format that is function 7 rs2 followed by rs1 function 3 rd of code and then I'm performing the checking so my test bench is going to do a set check over here is waiting for the next positive clock wait for c whole time and then I'm comparing the expected result with the actual result coming from the dt that is the alu unit if it is not equal, I'm going to display the message, the R type instruction is not working and the particular instruction also will be displayed, the function. And also I'm displaying the error as well as the time, right, the error message. And I'm displaying a message of fail string, you can see here. And dollar stop has been called so that the simulation will be suspended. It won't continue further so that we can go back and debug the RTL to fix this bug. And if the result is matching with expected value, we are going to display here the R type instruction is working perfect. And since the R type, we are expecting the program counter to be byte addressable. So I'm going to display the value of the IM adder out. It should increment like 4 plus 8. It should be like that 4, 8, 12, 16. In that order, it should change. Also, I'm displaying the result of op1, op2 the expected result and the actual result as well and then setting the instruction actually into unknown and I'm giving the relevant delay so that in the next clock cycle before uh, the passage of the clock within the setup time we should be able to change the next input in that way this task for R type instruction has been created all right so the same pattern will follow for the next instructions as well let's check this out 